All right, guys, I am here this morning. This is a topic that's so dear to me. I'm super excited to share some tips with you guys this morning. I've been in real estate since 2006, and from the day that I got my license, I stepped outside of that door working by referral. Um, I did hire a coach immediately, and the coach started me off with asking me certain questions that kind of fueled this desire to continue doing my business many, many years later, still by working by referral. The very first question he asked me was, Nadine, if there was someone that was looking to get their hair done, do you have someone in mind that you would be able to refer them to? And I was like, yeah, of course, absolutely. My braider is Emmy, and Emmy is the best of the best. She, she's the only one that I allow to touch my hair when it comes to braiding. And he said, okay, cool. If you were to throw a party, do you have a DJ in mind that, that you can recommend to someone? I said, yeah, that my coolie is my guy. Like, he is the best. So he asked me a series of questions, and then at the end he asked me, well, now that you have your license, you've been licensed for about six months now, if I were to ask your friends and your colleagues the same question, would they respond with you being the person? And I really didn't know the answer to that question, and that's what sparked me to continue and to be on this journey of working by referral. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys, and I will share what I've learned, what I've been doing that's been working for me. All right, give me a moment here. All right, working by referrals. This, for me, is the, the feel-good way to sell real estate. I know a lot of people do different things, but I like to run my business in a way that's very um, easygoing, that doesn't have a lot of stress, and I feel like when I work by referrals, that helps me attain that goal. I've been doing this, like I said, since 2006. 80% of my business is strictly by referrals only. I don't do a lot of cold calling. I don't do a lot of door knocking. It's, it's, it's just not my thing, and um, thankfully working by referral has allowed me to be afloat, continue doing really good business. My clients do become my friends. Um, when you're working by referral, it's something that you have to really care for. It, you can't really fake it. Eventually, you have, your personality will, will shine through. So for me, when I work with someone, I get to know who they are. I get to know about their family, their, their, their work, what they do for a living, and we create a, a lasting relationship. And I think that's the most important thing when you're working by referral. It's about building a solid solid relationship beyond the closing table. Um, it's helped me to build a very good network for my other endeavors that I do outside of real estate. I know for a fact that I have a group of people that I can call to if I'm doing something, if I'm starting something, that would support me because of the way that I treat them throughout the real estate process and after that. Um, and it helps you become the known trusted caring real estate advisor. If you ask anyone about Nadine, they will tell you that, oh, my God, that girl really cares about me and my family outside of real estate. Aside from that, it's fun. Working by referrals to me is fun. I wake up every day. I look forward to doing the things that I do for my clients. I look forward to serving them, and that's very, very important to me. Um, you do have a higher chance of gaining what I call a repeat or a lifetime client. For me, the goal is always, 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 for every closing that I do, that I get two or three referrals out of that one person. So when you work by referral, when you do a good job, then you have the chance, a higher chance, of having that client to be a lifetime client and possibly getting two or three more clients from just that one person. And if you do this right, if you do this consistently, you really do create walking human billboards for your business. You have a whole bunch of people that can't seem to keep their mouth closed when it comes to you as a real estate professional, and I think that's very, very important. How do I minimize this here? Hold on just a second. All right, there we go. Working by referral, again, it's hassle-free, at least to me. It's fun, it's strategic, and it's a caring method of running and managing your real estate business. The method, honestly, you have to be a giver. You have to be willing to give. So you have to give, then you have to ask, and then you receive the referral. Um, I know that sounds very simple, but if you really have to stick to that, that flow in order for this to actually work. 
Notice that giving is the number one thing before you ask for a referral or before you receive one. So by giving, just like building any other relationship, it's the foundation. You know, trust is the foundation to building a lasting relationship, whether it's a personal relationship or a business relationship. So when you're working by referral, it's the same exact thing. You want to build trust with your clients before you start asking them to do you favors. Lasting relationships with your best clients is so important. I hear so many agents that have a closing, they give a gift sometimes, and that's it. They don't have a relationship outside of the closing. For me, from the moment that you become my buyer, my seller, I start to dig. I start to ask you questions about your family. I start to ask you questions about your job. Here and there, I want to know who you are as a human being. It's very, very important to me because once I know who you are, once I have little bits and pieces of what you do, what's important to you, it helps me to note that in my database. That way, the next time I engage with you, I remember those key points because the truth is when we're selling to a buyer, we're helping a seller sell a house, right? We've already done the work. We've done most of the work. So why not leverage that relationship that you took so much time to nurture, to build? If you do it the right way, that relationship will send you so many other clients down the line. So forgiving is good service. I mean, we're all in the business of selling real estate. Um, I feel like that should be a priority to always give your best um, to serve the clients that are trusting you to guide them through the real estate process. Going above and beyond, sometimes it's, it's stopping by their house to take paperwork to a lender, whatever the case might be for you, it's having that heart, having that mentality to go above and beyond to help that client and not putting your commission at the forefront of your transaction. Um, although the commission is very important, but if you treat the person right, I feel like the money always follows. That's always been the case for me since 2006, and I really, really do stand by that. Paying attention to a need that someone might have. Sometimes you're talking to a client and you hear them say something and you're in a position to be able to either connect them with the resource that might be able to help them with the problem that they're facing or you can go above and beyond. And sometimes it's something as simple as running to the grocery store. I remember when this whole COVID-19 situation started, I had an elderly client that I was talking to because obviously with this pandemic, a lot of realtors right now, we're all connecting to everyone in our database. And for me, I made it a goal to literally make contact to every single person in my database with a phone call. So I happened to be talking to an elderly client that I had, and she was just kind of updating me on what, what's been going on with her, how her daughter had moved to another state. And um, she, was, she wasn't really in the good spirit and this toilet paper situation just came up and she couldn't find toilet paper. And she was just expressing that to me. She wasn't asking me for toilet paper, but because I was attentive to what she was saying, I was able to put a little goodie bag together for her, put a few rolls of toilet paper in there, put some hand sanitizer in there, um, a disposable mask that I had, and, and I dropped that in front of her door. And that made a big difference for her. And believe it or not, a few weeks later, she referred her neighbor to me, and her neighbor now is in the process of looking for a home. So when you pay attention to the needs that your clients might have, they don't really have to come out and say, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? You just have to put yourself as a professional in a position of value and have resources where you can actually help them when you're having conversations with them. So I know a lot of us are probably seasoned agents. There's probably new agents on, on, on the um, webinar this morning. You need to create a system, whether it's an Excel, Excel spreadsheet, whether it's a fancy um, database that you purchase, whatever it is, you need a system to be able to track your interactions with your clients. And when I say working by referrals is so simple, it's really four simple things that you have to continuously do. You have to be consistent with it. You have to care about doing it. And if you do it long enough, I do believe that you will get a lot of good results when it comes to that. So the interactions are calls. Calls are always number one. 
it's important to pick up the phone. I mean, you've already sold the person a house. You've already helped them, and you spent 30 to 45 days or probably more interacting with that individual. So it should be easier for you to pick up the phone and say, hey, Susie, I sold you a house three months ago. I was just calling to see how you're doing. How's your family? How's work? And it's a very quick call, but make sure it's something that you're doing consistently. So you do need a database of some sort to be able to log that you spoke to Susie today and Susie's cat died, for example. So you know what to do as a next step or when you do touch base with her the second time, you know what to kind of touch base on. So that's very important. Handwritten notes. I came out of um, the, the testing center knowing this is the way to do business for me. I'm old school at heart. Although I use um, all of the technology that we have, I love to write. So handwritten notes is something that is um, almost extinct. People don't like to write notes anymore. We don't write love letters. We don't do things like that. So when you have a client that receives a handwritten note from you, it's special. They hold on to that. It's something that's dear to them, and it gives you an opportunity to, to follow up. You know, after you send the handwritten note, more than likely they'll call you because it's like a surprise to them that they're actually receiving a note that was handwritten by someone. So that's something that is part of the four steps that you can do to work by referrals in a way that's effective for your business. This, by far, is my favorite thing, pop buys. I love, I'm a giver by uh, nature, so I love giving. And pop buys are simple. Um, my coach taught me about this, and I've stuck with it forever. And it's very simple. It's really just like you guys see it, popping by your client's house. You've already sold them a house. You've already helped them in a, in a real estate transaction. So popping by, putting it on your schedule, obviously, so pop by, not for 30 minutes, not for 20 minutes. It's really you're dropping off a little silly gift for them and saying hi. I was in the area, I was thinking of you, and I wanted to stop by and say hello. That really does make a big difference. And the very last thing is something that I think all of us are doing in some way, shape, or form. If you're not, you should be doing it. It's sending a monthly email, whether it's a market update, whether it's helpful resources, some tips. It could be real estate related. It could not be real estate related. For the summer, I usually send some tips on how to keep your home safe if you have a pool, things of that nature for your kids. Anything that you can send to your clients or to your database that's going to give them something that they can apply that will be helpful, you want to do that on a monthly basis. So these are some of the pop-by ideas that I've actually done um, during the COVID-19. Uh, I happen to have a box of little handy uh, hand sanitizers, and I just found this online, and I printed it out. I put my business card on there, and I did pop by to some people's house physically, but with COVID-19, I thought it was a cute idea to send them um, a little hand sanitizer since that was something that was being, um, it was scarce. Nobody could find it anywhere. So I mailed about 25 of these out to some of my clients, and I stopped by to maybe 10 people's houses and um, dropped those off. And believe it or not, my social media went crazy. Everybody opened it up and took a picture and tagged how their favorite um, realtor was thinking of them. Oh, my God. So this makes a different, it creates a domino effect. So that was one thing that I did. For this week, since it's nurse week, I am sending the, the other one here um, to my nurses that are my clients, previous clients. And it's just a $5 Starbucks gift card that I'm putting in a card and I'm sending it away to them with a little handwritten note. And um, it's, 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 it's cute, it's effective. They'll be able to buy a cup of coffee because they are definitely putting their lives on the line for us. So that was very important. So pop buys can be anything, guys. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It could be something from the dollar store. Um, it could be anything that you think of. Google is so good to finding pop buy ideas. Whatever you can think of that you can stop by that will be useful for your client, you want to schedule that somewhere into your, um, into your schedule to make it happen. Now, when, you, when you're working by referral, when you're doing real estate, honestly, you need to set goals. And for me, I feel like 
We've seen this before. Smart goals is the way to go when you're setting goals. So you want to be very specific about what you want to focus on, especially when you're working by referral. This week, do you want to just do 10 pop buys for the week? Do you want to do five pop buys for the week? Will your schedule allow it? The pop buys are not something where you're supposed to drop everything and do. You do it in between your route. If you're showing two properties in West Palm Beach and you have clients in West Palm, then you can schedule two pop buys in West Palm. If you're doing three um, listing appointments in the Broward area, you want to schedule your pop buys around your actual schedule. Your notes, you want to be specific about how many notes you want to send for the week. How many calls do you want to make for the week to your past clients? Um, you want to pick goals that are measurable. Obviously, you want to make sure that you can measure what you're doing so you can see if it's actually working for you. So that's very important, and this is why you need some type of tracking mechanism, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet or your database. You want to be able to track what you're doing continuously to see if it's working, what's working, so you can continue doing that, what's not working. And you want to make sure that your goals are achievable. For example, do not set yourself to make 40 calls if you know for a fact that you will not be able to make 40 calls this week for whatever reason. If you have training set up and you have family things going on, you want to set yourself up to actually be able to achieve the goals that you're setting, especially when it comes to working by referral, because it has to be something that is done consistently every single day you have to wake up and do something, whether it's a call, whether it's a pop by, whether it's writing a personal note. Um, I use social media a lot for my clients to be able to connect with them. So I follow most of my clients either on Facebook or Instagram. So I know if Sheena's dog died, it gives me an opportunity to write a personal note to Sheena expressing my condolences. It's easy for me to, to if I'm going to be on social media, to use it to my advantage to help grow my business. Your goals have to be realistic. I mean, that's clear as day. Your day-to-day -day life, you want to make sure that you're setting goals for your business that you actually can achieve. Don't overstretch yourself if you know you can't do it because you have a lot of things going on, especially right now during COVID-19. Um, it takes a lot of emotional um, energy to do certain things. So you want to make sure that you're doing things that are realistic that you can actually attain. And the last one is um, be realistic, be aggressive when setting your end time or your date to achieve something. So if you know you, you were able to set up to do 10 calls for the week, make sure by all means necessary that you make those 10 calls. Make sure by all means necessary that you do your 10 pop buys for the week if that's what you wanted to do. And just continue doing it over and over and over again, and I guarantee you that you will definitely get some type of success. Use social media to your advantage. If you're going to be on Facebook, if you're going to be on Instagram, please make sure that you are actually using that platform or those platforms to help you. Because if you are following your clients, they give you a lot of information where you can surprise them with um, an anniversary card because their anniversary is coming up or is their anniversary today. If you pay attention when you're on social media, you will definitely be able to grow your business in a genuine way where you um, can get some good response from your clients. And I do believe that concludes my time. The last thing I want to leave you guys with is Obviously, with anything that you do, you want to make a commitment. So if you are willing to work by referral, if you are willing to add working by referral to whatever that you're doing right now, just make sure you say this out loud, although it sounds silly, that I, Nadine, will do X by X date, whatever that is. For a lot of people, I would recommend starting with the personal notes. Um, maybe it's 10 for this week before the week is out. If you have nurses that's in your database right now, it's a perfect time to go and connect with them. Send them a personal note. Send them a Starbucks gift card or Dunkin' Donuts gift card, and just thank them for their service. And always, always remind them that you are never, ever, ever too occupied for their referrals that they're sending you. Never forget to, after every conversation, after whenever you send a pop by, whenever you send a personal note, that you let them know that you are welcoming their referrals that you value their referrals, and you continue doing that, I guarantee you that your business will definitely grow in a way that is hassle-free, in my opinion. And that concludes everything, guys. If you guys have any questions, 
I am more than welcome to answer anything that you are wanting clarification on. Thanks so much, Nadine. If you have questions, you can post them down in the Q&A, or uh, we have a minute or two if you want to raise your hand. I can unmute you to speak. Okay, well, I guess you covered it all, and I think it's a really great and positive message and so timely. How lucky were you to have a box of antibacterial uh, gel? Yes. My Instagram, um, one of the, someone just asked me, what's my Instagram? It's Miss underscore Dean on Instagram. M-I-S-S -S underscore D-I-N-E. Okay, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you and you have a great day and stay safe. Thank you, thank you, thank you.